Today I'm going to be talking about data availability, and in particular data availability risks, and what we've been working on at L2Bit with the DA risk framework. So if you're familiar with L2Bit, you're familiar with the L2 risk rosette, made up of uh, five categories, or uh, five slices, if you see that as a pizza. And one of the slices is data availability. And so far, uh, we have been marked green for um, layer twos using Ethereum as a data availability solutions. But we have lacked granularity on the risks and the different uh, characteristics of other data availability layers. And so this data availability risk framework aims at expanding our pre uh, previous efforts in assessing the security of different L2 architectures. And we aim to evaluate the specific security profiles, profiles of data availability uh, providers. And so a brief primer on data availability. You know it's uh, basically making block data accessible to all participants in the network, so to verify a blockchain block. And this generally applies also to layer twos, where participants in the network needs to be uh, able to access the data to verify the L2 state. But the slightly, slightly uh, difference in uh, L2 types, when you have uh, ZK constructions, you have validity proof, you know that the state transition is valid, but the user still need to be able to access the uh, data to be able to reconstruct the state and maybe advance it for withdrawals. In optimistic rollups, you still need to reconstruct the state with the data, but most importantly, you need to be able to challenge an invalid uh, state route pro proposal. And so what are the critical issues? They are different as well with the different uh, types. For ZK rollups, um, users may be left unable to prove that uh, ownership of the of their asset on the L2, and so this essentially would, would freeze their funds. While for optimistic constructions, this can be even worse, and you may have an invalid L2 state route being proposed, and without the transaction data necessary to recompute the state, um, users may be unable to prove its invalidity, and therefore uh, user funds could be at risk of being stolen. And so looking at how these uh, components play together with the availability layers and layer twos, you have a sequencer usually collecting transaction data and posting it to the DA layer. And this DA layer can be on chain in the case of uh, Ethereum, call data on the execution layer or blobs in the consensus layer, or it can be uh, on an external DA provider, um, which can be of two main types. One type is a dedicated blockchain, public blockchain like Celestia or Avail, and with its own consensus uh, mechanism, or can be on a data availability committee, which is basically a, a set of members getting together and preserving the data and making sure it's uh, accessible to users uh, upon demand. And if the data is on chain, then Ethereum is aware that the data has been posted, a data commitment is posted together with the data. But if the rollup is using an external data availability layer, then uh, you need a data attestation. And this data attestation needs to be posted to a DA bridge and act as an oracle uh, on Ethereum for the DA layer. And so, uh, if you think about securing data availability, you uh, have different guarantees that are needed, and here I group them into three categories. You have a data publishing guarantee, that basically uh, you need to make sure that the data was published and was accessible during the defined period, and this is uh, different than uh, a long-term storage of the data, but in this case, you just need the rollup to be um, aware of the data for the defined period on the DA layer. And then you need a data integrity guarantee, meaning that if any transformation is applied to the, to the data, uh, the users need to be able to uh, recollect the original data that was posted to the DA layer. And then to complete, you need a data attestation. So you need a, a proof to Ethereum that at any point in time, the data was stored 
and all the data was included. And so a key takeaway of securing data availability is that for Ethereum, uh, DA layer is secure only if there is also a DA bridge that uh, provides this proof. So the DA layer and the DA bridge needs to work together to make sure that data availability is uh, secured. So focusing on the DA layer, you have some issues in terms of what can go wrong with, the, with posting to the DA layer. And here I divided into two. You have uh, the issue of unavailable data. So uh, you can have the case that data cannot enter the ledger, and so data commitment cannot be produced. And uh, this can be the case if uh, a vast majority of nodes goes offline or there is a censorship attack on the DA layer, and this is a liveness issue. Or you may have the data that enters the ledger and then uh, at some point in time it disappears. And this would be the case, for example, for a chain reorg and uh, the data being unavailable also on the non-canonical fork. And this would be a safety issue. And the other issue is the withheld data. So data is attested but is not served and this would, uh, is known as a data withholding attack. And so we end up capturing uh, these issues and addressing them through the economic security risk dimension of the DRS framework. So this is uh, the first the category of the framework. And we, it aims at measuring the level of trust that we can place in the majority uh, consensus of the DA layer. And it's marked as green if the total, uh, total slashable uh, stake is quantifiable on chain and is more than the total value secured by the DA layer. Uh, it will be marked as yellow if the, this is not the case, so the total slashable funds are less than the total value secured. So for example, you may have uh, 10 billion total value secured and only 1 billion in slashable assets, then the validators may be incentivized uh, to be malicious or bribed to be malicious by someone else. And this will be marked as, uh, as yellow. And in this dimension, we aim at capturing not only the layers with their own consensus mechanism, but also uh, data availability committees. And so in the yellow category, we also um, include committees that are publicly verifiable on chain, meaning like uh, the, the, members, the members are known, that there is a reputational risk for the members and uh, they, they could lose their reputation if uh, they behave maliciously. But if they are not known, and so this could be the case for an unknown committee with, uh, with not known members, then this would be the worst case scenario and we marked as, uh, as red in, the, in this category. So we looked at uh, liveness and safety issues, but what about protecting against a data withholding attack? And usually have two ways. You can have every node uh, download all the data, uh, but this is, of course, not scalable and you would need to increase uh, node requirements. Or another approach is to use a data sampling algorithm, uh, like data availability sampling, that offer a way to uh, scale the data throughput while maintaining verifiability. And so just briefly, data availability sampling, you have edge of coding applied, which uh, splits the data into smaller chunks and has some redundancy so that the original data can be recovered from a subset of the chunks. But here it's important that there needs to be uh, enough verifiers or light clients or light nodes uh, to sample enough chunks to reconstruct the original data blob. And so this fraud detection, me detection mechanism is uh, the second category of the framework and aims at m measuring how effectively users can protect themselves against a malicious majority of committee members. And it would be marked as green if um, invalid data can be detected on the DA layer through a, a sound data availability sampling construction. And it would be marked as, um, as yellow if, for example, uh, there is a data availability sampling uh, construction, but uh, there aren't enough light nodes to sample 
enough chunks so the, the block cannot uh, reconstruct it. Um, and if there, is any, if there isn't any fraud detection mechanism at all, then it will be marked as, as red. And so we looked at the first part of securing the DA layer, and now we can look at securing the DA bridge. And here you can uh, group, group the issues into two. You have attestation uh, security. So basically, how can the bridge, how robust is the bridge verification of data commitment? And does it produce any additional trust assumption? And another issue that is very common to smart contracts and L2s as well is uh, upgradability. So uh, we need the criteria for an exit window and making sure that if there is any unwanted upgrade for the users, that they are able to, to exit the system. And so the third uh, category is the attestation security uh, that basically verifies that the economic security on the DA layer is mapped to that, uh, that attestation on the DA bridge. And this would include verifying signatures, verifying um, the threshold, and verifying the validator set that is tracked uh, properly on chain. And in the case of the ZK proof, the ZK proof would have to include these, uh, all these checks, the correctness of the signatures, the threshold. And if uh, the system wants to be marked as green, it would have, um, you, you wouldn't need to uh, allow for signature equivocation. So you, wouldn't, uh, you cannot sign something on the layer and something else as an attestation to, a, to the DA bridge. If that happens, it will be marked as uh, yellow. And this could be also be the case for uh, constructions where there's a different set of signers on uh, the DA layer and the DA bridge. Usually it's a, it's a smaller set of signers. While if there is no bridge at all, then of course it will be red. And the fourth one is the exit window, which basically examines the uh, possibility of users to exit the system in case of an unwanted upgrade. upgrade. And this follows the criteria that we set in the stages framework for L2s. So you would have green for an immutable bridge or an upgrade delay of uh, 30 days or more. And yellow for above seven days, which, which you can bring to zero if you have a security council in place uh, as defined in the stages framework as well. And red if the upgrade delay is below seven days and there is no security council. And so we get to the last one, which is additional trust assumptions of external DA layers to um, enshrine solutions on Ethereum. And here, basically, Ethereum rollups um, need to trust only full nodes on Ethereum, while if you're using an external DA layer, you introduce additional trust assumptions which come, which come from the need for a DA attestation on the DA bridge. And there is, uh, this graph is actually from uh, Luca Donno's uh, scalability.guide website, which basically goes through an example of um, a rollup using Ethereum, not uh, from the point of view of uh, enshrined with so-called data or blobs, but uses it as if it was an uh, external DA provider. And so you will post data to Ethereum and then data commitments to a DA bridge on Ethereum. And I think it's a good example to show how, uh, even if you're in this case when you're using a DA bridge uh, on Ethereum or uh, basically the same DA layer in two different ways. If you're using uh, Ethereum as an external uh, layer, so you're using um, data attestation signed by validators, you would need to follow the data commitments on the DA bridge. And in case of data withholding attack, while the full nodes on Ethereum for, our, for our enshrined rollup would be able to uh, discard the invalid data, so make sure that the data is only available uh, if, it's, uh, uh, if it's present on the, on the honest chain. In this case, you would need to trust 
the majority of validators to make it uh, to sign an attestation and to make it available to you. So we, we aim at capturing this difference in the last uh, category, which is accessibility. So it measures the uh, ease with which data can be accessed directly uh, from Ethereum, and so it will be marked as green for enshrined solutions in the Ethereum protocol and yellow for uh, not enshrined. And so we're aiming to finalize this uh, risk framework and we have had some uh, great suggestions in the L2Bit forum. So if you uh, want to provide feedback or if you have some comments, some suggestions, uh, you can go to the forum at gov.l2bit.com and uh, uh, post there. And that's it. If you have any questions, thank you. <laughs>